It says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ. By whom we also have access by faith unto the grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope in the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation work patient, and patient experience, and experience hope. And hope makes not ashamed, because the love of God has a shed has shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. But when we yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. But scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commanded his love towards us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were his enemy, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Um, I need some help on this one. Can you guys help me out? Yeah. Okay. Don't mind what you're saying. Um, the word atonement, when it's spoken twice in the Bible, is, do you guys understand the word New Testament and Old Testament? Yeah. In the New Testament, the Old Testament is what, so what the things don't apply to life now, and then it does. Say it again. In the Old Testament, it doesn't, it doesn't apply to life now. But why? <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right. But, it's, but the reason why There you go. <laughs> it is the reason why the atonement is the payment that God requires from it. God requires, because of sin, God requires a payment. We call it a sacrifice. Um, I really think sometimes we we know that Jesus died for my sin, but uh, there's a song that I used, I used to um, You know, uh, when we say Jesus died for our sin, we have to understand the price that he really paid on that cross. Uh, sometimes I think we have to understand the Old Testament of what the atonement was and what God really requires. But then we can understand in the New Testament of how Jesus met that requirement. How's that? Because, if, see, God did not change from the Old Testament to the New Testament. He didn't change. Only thing just happened, just like what uh, Sister Judy said. The requirements just changed. But God never changed. It just, the requirement that was met in the Old Testament is totally different than the requirement met in the New Testament. Even those that had to present their sacrifice never change. Do you know who can only present a sacrifice to God? The priest. Good. <laughs> You're right. You have to be a priest to present the, uh, the sacrifice. And to bring, to bring the atonement you have to be the high priest. Now, the priest, yes ma'am? The pain. In the Old Testament, we're going to go there. Let's go there. Let's, let, you ready for a ride? Okay, let's go there. Let's go into the 
umbilicus. The umbilicus? What's that? Is that with the B? Is that a B? F. F? Is that the new or old? Old okay. test. chapter was it? Uh, 16. Sister Mary? Yeah, 
because she had a She took the basket. She brought the basket. She put the pawn and pushed it to the, to the mm -hmm. princess to make sure she looks And Mary, and he has. I have another brother. That's all I don't know. Oh. <laughs> All I know is. Okay. Okay. The only thing I know is. And he has a brother named Aaron. Does he? Now, the thing about Aaron, when God was establishing the tabernacle, Moses was with. with it's what we would call the prophet, but Aaron was the high priest. It was through the, through the household of Aaron that we have a high priest. And only through the Leviticus was able to minister in the tabernacle. Out of all the 12 tribes, only the Leviticus priests would have been able to, but only the household of Aaron could be considered the priesthood. And their job was to minister to God. So uh, Moses' older brother, Job, was to minister to God. They would minister, and what a priest would do, they stand before God, before the people. That's what they would do. Uh, say like you sin. Everybody here sin, right? And who, who wants to be, be a volunteer? You want to volunteer? You want to You want to volunteer, Okay, for a second. Oh, God. Are you ready? Okay. So, we all sin, right? We all make mistakes. So, you as the high priest, so now God is angry because we all sin, right? So, what God would do was say, okay, we're going to take one person, you're the high priest, you're going to stand before God on behalf of everybody else. And that's what we did. That's the job of the high priest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you see where it works? Well, in the tabernacle, there's three, we call it three, three rooms. We have what you call the outer court. Then we have what you call the holy court, where the minister would be. But then there's a veil that only one person can go. And that person, he, the reason why he's the only one who can go because he's coming before the presence of an almighty God. That means if God is angry and that person has sin on God would, God would not accept that person. So the high priest was very important to God because without the high priest, the people of Israel would not be forgiven. So what you would do, you would come once a year. Every year, you have to do it. So would you want that job? <laughs> if you do it once a month, like, is he by himself? He does it by himself. <laughs> Before God. When God's angry. When God's angry. <laughs> She's right. <laughs> See, and the thing about it, and here's where it where he when he comes, he has what we call he has to have his a special garment. And he has the ephod. The ephod has twelve different uh, twelve um stones or different stones. And each stone represents the children of Israel. On his shoulder, he has Six on this shoulder, the name of the, uh, the tribe of Israel, and six on this shoulder, the tribe of Israel. So when he presents himself, first, he has to ask for forgiveness for himself because he cannot come before God with no sin. So if he has sinned, God will, God will have to reject him. So if you sin, then God has to reject you. <laughs> because you're coming for unholy God. You understand? And the thing about it, you gotta see. <laughs> the thing about it, to understand this high priest, he had to make an offering for himself and also 
an offering for the children of Israel. So the the bullock that when he when he presented the bullock, the bullock was for the offering for himself. And that has to be first. The first thing God has to do, he had to accept the high priest. Now, Brother Malcolm, we'll have to help you. What would happen if God did not accept the high priest? I think mom knows. He would kill him. Kill who? The high priest. <laughs> so if God did not accept the high priest, he would be killed, right? And, the, and this is what he would have to wear. When he wore this, this garment, on the end of the garment, there was bells. And there was a rope. Because it's only him. Remember, it's only him. So this rope, and people will be holding this rope. And as long as he's moving, he'll they'll hear the bell. When they stop, if they don't hear the bell, they, they know God has killed him. So he had and so he had to keep moving and they were listening to the bells at the end of end of the road. And this is so important because this is what we call atonement. He had this is the only way you would have to the atonement was made. He would take the bull off, he would take the bull, and he would take the blood, and he would sprinkle the blood around the arm. Uh, we're on the mercy seat seven times. Now that was just only for him. That was just only for him. Then there was the goat. Now there was two goats, correct? Okay. Have you guys heard the word scapegoat? You know what scapegoat is? A way out. <laughs> it means a way out. And um, he would take one goat, he would take the, the goat in, and he would kill the goat and take the blood of the first goat and offer it seven times for the children of Israel. He would present the second goat before God. Then he would take the second goat and present it before the congregation. And they would wait, and if the second goat was accepted, they would all put their hands on the second goat as saying, now my sin has been input on the second goat, and then the second goat would go into the wilderness, and you can never be used again. And that's how every year sin was forgiven. How would you know that it was the same goat? Huh? How would you know that it wasn't the same goat? They marked it. They marked it. They mark it. It is it's, it's marked. And the reason why this is how sin was forgiven in the Old Testament, this is what we call the Day of Atonement. Now, what the children of Israel would do, they would bring offering, they would bring a sacrifice, and then they would kill the sacrifice, and this is where that ash would come. But this is where the sacrifice would be killed for their forgiveness of sin. Now, that means every year we would have to do this. We would have to do this. And if God has accepted the high priest, if God has accepted the sacrifice, if God has accepted everything, then the children of Israel's sin would have been forgiven. And the reason why that goat would go because that is a sign that God has forgiven you of your sin as far as so that goat is your scapegoat. That means your sin has been forgiven. It's not been put on you. And so now so now we're going to talk about a better way. We're going to talk about a better way. Amen?
now I want to talk about a different way. Now, the reason why I wanted to go there is because I want to, um, to understand the purpose of atonement. So, first we have to understand God requires a payment for sin. So when you sin, God requires a payment. How's that? You agree with that? You know, and if God requires a, a payment, that payment is death. Because do you guys know what the, the way this is? Yeah. Yeah. The wages of sin is death. So, when I sin, my punishment is what's my punishment? Death. Okay. Even with forgiveness, the punishment is still, there still have to be a death. Yeah, the sacrifice. No, that won't be a sacrifice. 
It won't be it wasn't effective. a word of sacrifice. Because God counts sin and you can only come to God yourself. Yeah. Oh, that's the only way that God so another it. high priest would have to write it in his place, go through the right. whole process again until God found the high priest who was worthy of the, the sacrifice so and he, accept the so sacrifice. So he killed him if he still if he sinned. Still, still sinned yeah. mm-hmm. oh. And good. <laughs> Genesis. 
And uh, the reason why I said it is because this is where uh, the writer is getting the, the tenth that is when Melchizedek, when Abraham came back, he gave Melchizedek one tenth as given it unto the Lord. The tithe. And, you know, we, you know, we, uh, when they established the tabernacle, only the Leviticans was able to operate in the tabernacle. Out of all the tribes, each tribe could have a portion of land except the Levitican tribe. The Levitican tribe was the only tribe that never ha does not have a piece of land because their job was only to take care of, to minister to unto the Lord. And the tithing, when when they when the uh, the eleven tribes when they give tithing, a portion of that tithing one. Um, 1% of that tithing goes to the Levitical so to support them. And they are not allowed to work, they are not allowed to do anything but just minister yeah. to the, the temple. And out of that portion, they give 1% of that tithe, which goes to the high priest. The reason why I'm saying this is because they were, in, in establishing this, they was establishing that if the Levitical was the one who ministered to God, and they're the only one that can do the, the ministry, the ministration. Where the other 11 tribe could not, did not um, have nothing to do with the priesthood or doing anything with ministry, right? But when we say that the Melchizedek is higher than um, the Levitical, this is where the writer is getting where the Melchizedek priesthood is greater than the Levitical priesthood. Why? Because Abraham gave a tenth to Melchizedek. And if Abraham gave a tenth to Melchizedek, who is Levi to Abraham? Does anybody know? Okay, I, I make this easy. I make, who's 